All right, what's going on everybody? Physio Trader here. And um, I did a video previously about how I set up my hotkeys with Lightspeed. Now, as you may know, or if you're new to the channel, welcome aboard. Um, I am using Lightspeed as my primary active trading brokerage. That is for the brokerage that I'm getting in and out of trades very, very quickly. For some of the brokers or for my other accounts outside of Lightspeed, I still use Charles Schwab's Street Smart Edge. Now, I do like Charles Schwab's a lot. Every once in a while, you'll hear me complain and say things like, wow, the, the speed, the execution is not that good. And to, to be honest and to be quite fair, it really is. Uh, quite magnificent when you compare it to many of the other free brokers. What I mean by free is I mean those commission-free brokers. Uh, you could have Robinhood, Webull, E-Trade, um, Trade Zero, you name it. Uh, there's many, many brokers out there. Um, and the fact is, is that when you have a direct access broker, you typically do get faster commissions. And I have a video on this where Schwab is very, very, um, you know, unique in the, in the, the special situation. Whereas when you have most of your brokers, you have what is called a full service broker where they basically give you a bunch of data, a bunch of buy and sell signals, they have a ton of education, or you have a direct access broker where a direct access broker is gonna focus on speed of execution and having you know a, a strong, consistent platform usage. Um, or you're gonna have something like E-Trade where it's gonna give you a bunch of information, a bunch of data, a bunch of analysts choosing, is this a good time to buy? Is it a time to hold? Is it a time to sell? For millions of, of different opportunities, really it's like 4,000 different tickers on the United uh, States Stock Exchange, the New York Stock Exchange. Now, with that being said, Schwab is kind of unique in the sense that it actually has both. You get the ability, uh, and, and you don't have to like pick or choose. And so you get the ability to have what's known as limited direct access. Now, I can't send it to any you know book or any exchange that I want, but I do get the option to send it to one of two or you can go on the standard market. You can go to Schwab's Smart Route Ordering, which is uh, basically they just choose the best one for you, or you can bypass the algorithms and send it directly to either the ARCA book or the NASDAQ book. Now, I always send it to the NASDAQ, whether I'm using Schwab or whether I'm using uh, Lightspeed, I always send it to the NASDAQ, so it actually works out well for me. I don't care that I don't have access to send it to the, the BATS or the Colmex or a bunch of other different brokers or a bunch of different other market makers. Now, for me, that's just how I work. Uh, now, the reason that direct access is so good is because in the time that it takes me to send it to Schwab so that they can do their smart their smart order routing, it actually takes time. They have to send it somewhere, and then the algorithm, even if it's super fast, has to sit there and say, wait a minute, what's, who's got the best order? And then it goes down the list of however many market makers there are, and then it decides which one is the best to go to. Now, when I send it to NASDAQ, it sends it right to NASDAQ. It doesn't look for what the best order it is. It just sends it to the NASDAQ market maker. And so I like that. I like that because speed is everything, especially when you're doing uh, day trading. Now, if you're a slow, long-term investor, this doesn't matter. But... To be fair, if you're a slow, um, you know, a slow investor, long-term holder, a hodler, as you may call it, or even if you are somebody who's doing swing trades greater than, I'd say, the five-minute candles, then this this entire video probably doesn't pertain to you anyway. So what we're going to talk about here is using hotkeys. So again, I have a video on how I do it with, um, with Lightspeed. Here we're going to talk about how we do it with Schwab. So right now I have the Street Smart Edge platform loaded up on the screen. You should see the entire screen here. And you're going to go over here to Settings. From here, you're going to click that Settings button and it is going to pull it in. So I'm gonna pull it up here, and we are gonna kind of zoom in on this screen a little bit over here. And basically, this is just gonna show you the settings. First and foremost, and I have this in my other videos, but if you click settings and you do not have this refresh rate, like I think this refresh rate was like way down here when I first had um, open, you know, pull that bad boy, max CPU load, you need, if you're trying to trade, you need this thing to be blowing up as fast. It needs to be constantly refreshing, giving you the best up-to-date current speed. So you're gonna click over here to the tab for trading and you're gonna go to equity hotkeys. Hopefully you can all see that right there. And that equity hotkeys button right here, you are going to, basically here, you type in your keys. Now, apparently, I have control B and control S. So it looks like, you know, I don't even use hotkeys anymore. 
Um, so that's kind of, or I do use hotkeys. I don't use these hotkeys. I should actually disable these because I don't want to accidentally do something on Schwab when I am at, you know, attempting to do something different on, incidentally enough, these are almost all the exact same hockey. That's funny. So the, the premise is quite simple, which is a good thing, I guess. So right here, uh, apparently I've already got four hotkeys set up. Uh, first one being control S. I want to sell 100 shares at the inside bid minus a cent. So I want to kind of get in front of that bid. Uh, to buy 100 shares, I want to buy 100 shares at the ask. So I'm looking for breakdown and breakouts, apparently. That's what I was uh, doing over here. Um, control Shift X, shorting. So with Schwab, Schwab's platform, you actually have to, um, you know, this, I'm, I'm in one of my retirement accounts, so this short button is uh, invisible. Let's see, I don't even know if you guys can see it over here. Yeah, you can't even see it. But anyway, the there's a separate button. You have a buy button, a sell button, and a short. Uh, with light speed, the sell button is sell, whether you're selling short or closing the position, it doesn't matter. So it's one, it's one uh, distinct button. I actually kind of like it that way, but for some people, they prefer a designated short button. Everyone's different, teach their own. Um, so I actually had to put a separate hotkey into short, um, in which I did there. And then of course, cover to buy would be the same thing, just control V. Um, and then I have a cancel all. Now here's what it looks like. If all of these, so let's, I'm just gonna kind of disable these right now because I don't want to use them. Um, but right here, this is how it starts. When you don't have anything here, it's gonna look like this. It's gonna have an empty, it'll just say keystroke, action type, action, 100 shares, limit price, blah, blah, blah. So first off, your keystroke, this is what you type into the computer. So um, for me, and it's be the exact same that I would do on, um, uh, on Lightspeed, and, and I actually think it's easier to set stuff up on this than it would be on uh, on Lightspeed. But again, uh, my thing would be Control Q. So notice how when I typed Control, I want to kind of get rid of this for a minute. Um, let me see. Let me just exit this out for a minute. Notice how, so my finger right now, you can't see it, but it's on control. Now, I am using an Apple keyboard, so you have to make sure you're not using the command button, uh, which would also be like the Windows button. Uh, you're going to actually hold the control button, and then Q, which is exactly what I have set up to buy 100 shares in my Lightspeed account. So I'm going to do control Q, and as soon as they're both uh, enabled, boom, you get to see it pop up. So right now, I'm working on control Q, and if you've watched any of my other videos, um, you can basically say that you can have it set up. Do you want it to enter an order? Do you want it to pop up a dialog box? Do you want it to load certain parameters or load a quantity? Some people may say, I want control Q to change my quantity from 50 shares to hundred shares. Uh, you can do that. You could literally say, okay, I want to do this and I want to load quantity to let's say 200 shares. Right now I have my thing set up to automatically load into, um, Right now I have it set to automatically load into um, you know, 100 shares no matter what ticker I bring up. I think Tesla might be a little bit different. So Tesla's different, it goes to 25. So let me go back to Snap. So I've got Snap, you can see this right here, focus right here at this, and let's see, I, I, I don't know if this is gonna work. Control Q. Oh, did not work. Huh. All right. So it's a good thing I'm testing this. Look like a buffoon now. Hockey's control Q, load quantity, 200 shares. Huh. Oh, there it went. I was not on the right button. So Apple, um, so Apple, so I was uh, I was just on the wrong order entry window. So you actually have to be on the, the order entry window. So right here, you see it's there. I'm gonna click Control Q, boom, it goes up to 200, okay? I'm gonna go back to something else because I do have this platform set to automatically go back to 100, except Tesla, I think it's set to that. So Control Q, boom, it goes up to 200. So, <sighs> so with that, you can, you know, make that whatever you want. So if that's something you wanna do and you wanna make it focused on uh, loading up a certain quantity, I actually like that, I, I never even thought about that. So, you know, learn something new every day. So I actually don't want it to load a quantity, but you can keep that if you do. Uh, I know there's a lot of people that like to trade with different tier sizes, like I said, with bigger, bigger order entries. Um, 
But for me, I wanted to do something. I wanted to enter an order right now. And what I wanted to do is I want to buy. From here, this is very important. If you are buying or if you are selling or shorting, it is very, very important that you pay attention to what's next, the venue. Now, it took me forever to figure this one out. The venue is... Do you want it to be on smart pre-market after ARCA NASDAQ? Now, I actually got the ability to click NASDAQ or ARCA before I had direct market access. If you do not have direct market access, and I'm going to put a description down and below how you get it. Look at my other video. Uh, watch this video down below. If you do not have direct market, a market access and you click either NASDAQ or ARCA, it will do nothing. It will do absolutely nothing. Uh, if you do have direct market access enabled and you go over here and the venue says, um, you know, NASDAQ, then it will work. Or I could click, you know, ARCA and it will go to ARCA, NASDAQ. Now, one of the other reasons I like having the ability to the NASDAQ or the ARCA is that I don't have to look at the time frame. For instance, with Schwab, with the Street Smart Edge, and I talk about this in my other video, is that when I have NASDAQ or ARCA chosen, I can buy or sell pre-market during market and post market without choosing a different venue. If you are buying during market, if you don't, these don't even exist to you for one, if you don't have direct market access set up. You have the access for after hours, pre-market, and smart. Smart, you can only use that during the market hours open. Pre-market, it does not let you make buy or sell options five minutes before the market opens. And after hours, you cannot buy or sell five minutes after the market closes. You are literally stuck in time for five minutes. And for that, and again, it is free to add direct market access. I highly recommend you have direct market access because right before the market opens, there were so many times that the, the price was going against me and I couldn't get out and I didn't know why it would not trigger the order. Same thing, maybe there is a after hours news going on or earnings going on that you wanna get out because it is not favorable in your uh, favor anymore. You have to sit through those five minutes if you are on after hours as opposed to these two. These two, you send your order directly to the book. Schwab has nothing to do with it. So once more, venue, if you do not have uh, direct market access, then you'll just click smart, which is fine. And down here, it would be on smart. You would actually wouldn't even have access to NASDAQ. But even if you have direct market access or not, these will show up over here because these showed up for me before I ever knew that I could get limited direct access, which is actually how I found out about getting direct access. So again, I do have it enabled. So I've got it. I'm going to click NASDAQ because that's what I want. I want 100 shares. I want to make it a, do I want to make it a market order? Like, do I just want in whatever the price is, get me in? Do I want a limit order, a limit invisible? Do I want to hide my shares? It's 100 shares, get real. I don't need to hide that. Um, do I want a market or a primary peg? I would want a limit order. My limit price, it's going to be the inside bid. And for me, um, if I'm trying to add liquidity, I want to be down, um, you know, five cents. I'm allowing it to go five cents against me. I want to keep going. Uh, max floor would be like, if, if this price just keeps falling, how much do you want? Uh, you can also put it a, a time in force. Do you want it to be a day or like filler kill or initiate or kill it or, or whatever? Um, and you can also have your, you know, immediately set up uh, profit exit, trailing stop, stop losses right away. Um, and that's how you're going to do it. Now, if you want to sell, so if, let's say I wanted to sell, I would just click save. Uh, unfortunately, every time you save it, it's going to close the dialog box out. You do have to save it when you do each one. It's kind of annoying, but I'll take it. Um, and then you just go back and add another one. So you can see there it is enabled. Uh, and let's go right here. So anytime you want to add a new one, you just click that bottom keystroke button. And so for me, I'm going to say shift Q now because I want to... Uh, so I can't do shift Q. Looks like shift is not an option for me. So with Schwab, it, it appears shift is not an option, which is fine. Um, so control one. So now I'm going to enter an order because I want it to do something. I want to sell. I want to sell on the NASDAQ. I want to sell 100 shares. I want to sell on the ask. So I'm going to allow this thing to go five cents against me. 
and uh, basically I'm, I'm trying to get in on this order I'm trying to get out remember with Schwab in order to short you need a separate button than you would to um, to sell so right here you would just click uh, action you would click buy sell or short you would have that one you can also have a close all like i think i did have up here uh control zero was also uh cancel all orders uh close all so you can have and and for those of you who don't know and i know i might be getting in the weeds a little bit here what some of this means close means you're closing the position if you're long it'll it'll sell if you're short it'll buy uh, some people like to click just the close or um, the close button because they don't want a fat finger or accidentally, you know, they're short and instead of buying to cover, they accidentally sell because they're emotional and then they end up doubling down on a position that may be going against them or they may be trying to get out at a profit and then they end up selling more and then they lose their profit margin because now they've just doubled down on a position when they tried to close. Close means if you're long, it'll sell. If you're short, it'll buy to cover. Uh, close all it's the exact same thing except if you had multiple orders open at the same time not just orders out there to the world but you're in multiple positions it will close all of those typically when you do close all most people just set it to market like just just get me out of everything I want to be out I want to be done um, uh, you can have a cancel all cancel the most recent or cancel all on the certain symbol and that's if somebody's throwing out a ton of different symbol orders at the same time or a ton of different orders multiple symbols at a time and you may say I don't want to cancel all. I'm just the most recent symbol I've been throwing out you can do that um, so what I like to do is I have a buy a sell I I like the idea of using close but it to me is just it, it, I don't need to because I'm not normally holding that many positions open at once, at least not in my, you know, any account or any time when I'm actually doing a hot key. Uh, to me, a hot key is only used if I don't have time or the, the mouse appreciation to move the mouse over to type in the order. I want to get in right now. I want to get out probably very quickly as well. If that's the case, if I have the time to use the mouse, then I'm going to use the mouse and take advantage of, uh, you know, just making sure that I have precision. And then, of course, I also always do have a, a cancel all button. You can already see it's already I don't have it enabled right now. I'm going to actually cancel these guys out. But cancel all just control zero cancels all my orders. I've been doing that with Lightspeed for quite a while as well. Just right before I shut down the platform, just give it an extra, you know, I double tap it. I go control zero, control zero twice just to make sure that all of my orders are canceled out, making sure that I'm not accidentally getting into an order before. Or, um, I shut down my platform and end up getting into a trade that I am not interested in getting at. Uh, I hope this was able to help out somebody. If um, if you would, you know, leave me a like, you know, share with anybody that this could help out with. If you haven't already done so, I'd love to have you a subscri subscriber. And thank you so so much for watching.